Ah yes, good evening. You know I just felt like doing a video on this. I know people have asked me to do a video on Barbie, give my take on it, and I will. I was planning on doing it in this video, but I thought, ah, bollocks, I might make it too long, so uh, I'll make that in a separate video. Uh, we had Ethan von Skyver on the show to hear his thoughts about the movie on the podcast a few days ago, and I wanted to discuss that. Now, Aiden is the one who knows and brings on all of these people. You might have noticed, whenever there's a guest on our show, I tend to be very quiet. I hang back and listen. I'm a fly on the wall, or a spoon in the drawer, I suppose, but I do hear everything. I don't even know who some of these people are, I'll be honest, so I'll try and absorb the conversation. It's not a formal debate. I'm not there to change their opinions. Sure as hell, they're not going to change mine, so I see no need to intervene and get combative. It's, uh, it's unnecessary. But uh, be that as it may, I am going to be as bluntly honest as I can, Critical, conceited, naturally, but uh, as charitable as I can be. If there is one quote I like to be remembered by, it's always be charitable. Because charitable is where you learn, whereas dismissal is where you learn fuck all. Except for when it comes to the rainbow people. Uh, with them it's more... The mercy! Yeah, that. Other than that, words to live by. The thing is for me, a good critic is someone that can articulate their opinions in a way that can capture and resonate with the spirit of the audience. It must satiate their desire to feel informed by your assessment in a manner that is trusted and genuine. They are coming to you to listen, not be spoken to. The distinction is important. I'm looking at you, you Hollywood dickheads. I say that because there was someone like that in the chat having an autistic aneurysm. A user named Vito? Had a check mark, so I'm assuming that's a YouTuber. Don't know who he is, don't care either. His conduct left me with the impression he's a stuck up pretentious git. Which is pretty rich coming from me, because I can guarantee you I sound more pretentious than he does. I just wanted to get in a dig because I found his etiquette that of a lowbrow peasant, frankly classless. Now with that being said, the straight shooter in me wants to flat out say I don't think I agreed with anything Ethan said at all. Yeah, it was pretty early on I said, did we even watch the same movie? Because I knew from then on, I was not going to like where this was going. And yes, I will openly admit I only listened to confirm my suspicions. Drown me, there's a reason I was so quiet. But someone did message me during and said to me, is it just them or does the whole thing feel like a cope? And I agree with that. I believe my words to them were, what fucking world do you live in where women have felt like this? And in case you can't tell, behind the scenes I'm a bit more, um crass and unrefined you can say i fire from the hip a lot more in close quarters again there's a reason why almost the only point of the whole evening where i piped up is when ethan tried to make the case that barbie's world is somehow how feminists have felt slighted by men but this is also how a young girl sees the world that to me was the last straw i thought no the reason why feminists get slighted by men is because they're fat ugly and undesirable hence why they're feminists if prepubescent girls feel that way, dear God, I think we have much more bigger problems in our society than some stuck-up plastic movie, I mean my word. That was the moment I turned off, I was out. The thing is with Ethan's kind of outlook on this, and I assume this is what earned him the uh, ire that he faced on Twitter, is he is coming at this from the perspective of the artist at a time where that currency is not particularly one of great value. Hell, you could even go so far as to say it sounds kind of tone deaf. It's a bit like being a comedian telling a really clever joke that only 5% of the audience understands. Yet to you it may be witty and intelligent, as well as to the 5% of the audience members who understand and appreciate it, but the plebs are still befuddled and somewhat irritated by it. And if you still try and push it, there's a pretty good chance your niche love affair with something most people still dislike is going to lead to an often logical conclusion, which is that you're just kind of a fanboy. Where I can sort of understand his conduct on the podcast, because I've been told he was somewhat brash, dismissive and rude, bear in mind he is talking to what essentially amounts to two avatars of all the pissed off hornet-like voices he's had to endure on Twitter. So I will cut the gentleman some slack. Considering some of the stuff I've had held at me, Ethan was like a pleasant summer breeze. Now, considering the conversation was apparently a contentious one, let me play the mediator for a moment, if I may, a role I am exceptional at. Yes, believe it or not, I am far nicer than most people think, but don't tell anyone that's a secret. Anyway, let me try and bridge the gap here, sort of a segue from the artistic viewpoint. Because politics has poisoned everything these days, propaganda is rife, and so our senses for it are heightened to, one could argue, rather effectively, I might add, an unhealthy degree. Going into this plastic hellscape, the propaganda is immediate, and I mean immediate. 
The opening scene itself is nothing but propaganda, as is roughly, say, the first 15 minutes of the film. It sets the stage for it with this ungodly amount of nauseating cringe. If you're already hawk-eyed and batty at going in, and the signals for the message are in the double-digit range before you've even hit the 15-minute mark, you're cocked and loaded, and in that mindset, you're also going to notice the plot makes absolutely no fucking sense. And this is Ethan's problem. The kind of people that he is going to piss off with his takes are in that battle-hardened frame of mind. They don't care about the artistic side because all they see is the politics. They see the propaganda everywhere. He can't change the mindset of the audience, but he can alter the message to be better suited to be understood by the mindset of the people that he's pissed off. The thing to keep in mind as well, and this is where I think Ethan has his strongest argument. I don't think it's particularly good either way, but I think it's his strongest one. We're basically going off an angry Twitter mob and himself, and we don't know the reaction of the average viewer. An argument can be made that his take is closer to the eyes and minds of the average normie. Now, I think that's a load of bollocks, personally, but do keep it in mind. The concern for the right is this. It's political propaganda, and that is all they see, and rightly so. Ethan, on the other hand, sees the art. If he shifted his critique to the artistic expression appeals a lot more to the normies than you think, here are reasons X, Y, and Z, Y. That, that I think would go a long way to a more constructive conversation about the film's impact. Cheers for watching, and once again, I apologize for nothing. <laughs>